Welcome back to uh, Tuesday Night Bible Study. Tonight we're going to pick back up on the Premillennial View, Part 11. Tonight I plan on finishing the Gog-Magog War that we covered uh, Tuesday before last. So tonight let's go ahead and get started into it. If everyone that would join me, let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 38. And we're going to read this whole chapter and we're going to break all this down tonight. So we know exactly who God is, of course, who Ezekiel is prophesying about. And of course, this is the Gog Magog War. Now, when does the Gog Magog War happen? The Bible doesn't tell us when it happens. We do know, according to Bible scholars, that it's going to happen sometime after the rapture of the church. Many Bible scholars, as well as I, believe that it'll happen the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation period, when the Antichrist has been found out by the Jewish people. He has received a wound, a fatal wound, and he miraculously healed from it, uh, emulating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And at this time, uh, Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 24 that the Jews will have to flee because he is going to try to kill them. He's going to try to destroy them after he breaks the peace covenant with them. So a lot of Bible scholars believe this is when this first battle is going to happen. So tonight, let's go ahead and let's get into this. Let's start reading and we'll break this chapter down. And of course, I want to add some things in there tonight. Um, out of chapter 39, both of them is the same event. It's the, Ezekiel 38 and 39 are the same. Uh, it tells us about this Gog Magog war. All right, let's get started. And the word of the Lord came to me, which would be Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Now, Son of Man, of course, would be God's telling this to Ezekiel. He said, set your face towards Gog. In other words, who is Gog? We talked about this uh, last or Tuesday before. Gog here is a prince because the Bible calls, he's a man because the Bible calls him. So he's the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal and prophesy against him. He says, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog. Now, all right. Gog here, we talked about at whenever this event actually happens, will be whoever is leading Russia. In other words, for an example, if this was to happen tomorrow, it would be Putin. But when future events come on, whoever is the president of, of uh, Russia is Gog. Now, we, we broke that down last Tuesday and explained how we knew that when we look back in Genesis. We looked at Genesis and we talked about that. So tonight we're going to actually break all this down. All right. He's the prince of Russia. Okay. Rosh is Russia. Meshach is modern day Moscow. And Tubal would be a Russian city which is called today Tubalisk. All right. He says in verse 4, he says right here, I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws and I will bring you out. In other words, like I talked about before, when you put when you're fishing and you hook a fish, you reel that fish to where you want him. Well, God has hooked this leader of Russia and he's going to bring him to where he wants him, which will be the land of Israel. He says right here, I will put hooks in your jaws. I will bring you out. He says and all your army, horses, horsemen, all of them splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. This was written over 2,600 years ago, folks. Uh, the prophecy would show Ezekiel. They didn't know what tanks was then. They didn't know what uh, 
uh, jet fighters was. They didn't know what uh, uh, guns were at this point. So when war happened back then, they would be a great company. They would uh, have horses, buggies, chariots. They would be all with buckler and shield. In other words, this shows wielding swords. This shows they are preparing or, and prepared to go to war. He says, there'll be a great company with you. Verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, put with them, all of them with shield and helmet. All right, Persia here is modern day Iran. Ethiopia, of course. Ethiopia, Kush, is modern day Sudan. Put, puts Libya. Also, Africa. Okay, now, these all with shield and helmet. These are your ten kings that's going to be going up against Israel in this Gog Magog war. He says here, Gomer with all its troops. Who's Gomer? Gomer is Germany and Ukraine. Okay? Beth Dorkama. Who is this? Beth Dorkama is Turkey and also. Uh, Asia Minor. All right, these are your ten kings, folks. And he says, I'm going to bring them from the remote parts of the north with all its troops, many peoples with you. How do we know Rosh is Russia? Remember, Ezekiel is prophesying against this leader, Gog. That's what he's talking about. He's going to bring him out of the remote parts of the north. In Israel, if you was to set a compass in Israel, when it points straight due north, there's farthest north of land there is until you hit the, the Caspian Sea up into the, Antarctic, uh, up into the Arctic Seas is Russia. It's the farthest land north. That's how we know uh, also... We do know that Japheth, we talked about that, he migrated, we, we talked about that a two, a two, two Tuesdays ago, that he migrated north beyond the Caspian Sea, which was called Rosh, okay? Now, all right, we learned that who the ten kings are. Now, he tells them here. We know where they're coming from. Who the, who's leading this war? Who's leading this Gog Magog war? It is the leader of Russia. He is God. He says, be prepared and prepare yourself. You, Gog's what he's saying, and all your companies that are assembled about you and be on guard for them. He says right here, verse 8, after many days you will be summoned in the latter years. Again, in the latter years, this is where Bible scholars also believe in the tribulation period, there's 2,520 days, a seven-year period. It's broke up into the tribulation and the great tribulation. It's 1,260 days. It's the first three and a half years. 1,260 days is the last three and a half years. They believe the latter days here is talking about the latter part of the tribulation period. He says right here, the latter years you will come into a land which is restored from the sword. Now, we're going to see some prophecies here. Those inhabitants have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel. All right. We see right now, since Israel became a nation in 1948, all right, Hit is a sovereign nation now. Hit was given by a blood covenant by God to Abraham and all his descendants by a blood covenant. Israel doesn't occupy the land, folks. They own the land. All right, he says right here how it was restored from the sword for, for, for many years. It had been trod down by the Gentiles. In 1948, it had become a sovereign nation, and it is controlled by the Jewish people. Now, he says they have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel. Where I'm going with that, since 1948, since Israel become a nation, they have been plane loads of Jews returning to their homeland. Just right now, with the Ukraine war going on, Russian, or excuse me, uh, 
I'm sort of tongue-tied tonight. You all have to look over me. I'm a little tired. Ukrainian Jews are getting on airplanes right now and returning to their homeland. This is prophecy that we can see being fulfilled right now as I speak. He says right here, to the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. It had up to 1948, folks, but its people were brought out from the nations. Here we go again. And they are living securely, all of them. In other words, they are living right now securely, just as the United States is. He says right here, verse 9, you will go up. You, he's talking about the leader of Russia, Gog. You are is Gog. You will go up. You will come like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. In other words, it's going to be such a massive military might that it's once this war's over, and we're going to talk about this, it will take seven months to bury the dead, and it will take seven years. Jewish people will burn the weapons of war and destroy the weapons of war for seven years. We will look at that in the next chapter. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and move over and look at that. Go over to the next chapter, Ezekiel 39, and let's move down. All right, verse 8. Now, he says, Behold, it is coming, and it shall be done. In other words, it's a set date, time, hour, and it will happen, as God spoke it, declares the Lord God. That is the day of which I have spoken. Then those who inhabit the cities of Israel will go out and make fires with the weapons and burn them both but shields and bucklers, bows, arrows, clubs and spears, for seven years they will make fires with them. They will not take wood from the field or gather firewood from the forest, for they will make fires with the weapons, and they will take spoil of those who despoil them and seize and plunder of those who plunder them, declares the Lord God. He says, on that day, I, in other words, God, will declare Gog a burial ground there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by the east of the sea, and it will block them off from the pass. So they will bury Gog there with all its horde, and it will call it the valley of Hammon Gog. Listen to this. Seven months the house of Israel will bury them in order to cleanse the land. Folks, we have... Uh, equipment today, modernized equipment, dozers, all this, that is going to take them seven months to bury the dead. It's going to take seven years to burn the weapons of war. Folks, think about what a massive military might that's going to be going up against Israel. It's, it's something that the world has never seen before. And again, let's go back up to the top. I want to, I want to show you all one more thing. Verse 2, he says, I will turn you around, drive you on, take you up from the remotest parts of the north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. There again, it talks about how Rosh, an Old Testament city, is modern day Russia. All right, let's move back over to 38, verse 11, or excuse me, verse 10. Thus says the Lord God, it will come about on that day that thoughts will go into your mind. Remember, he's talking about the leader of God, the leader of Russia. And you will devise an evil plan. He says, and you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go against those who are at rest and live securely. All of them living without walls and having no bars or gates. In other words, back in the Old Testament, most of your big major cities had walls built around them for protection and bars and gates for protection. Israel is living as a free country right now, and that's what this prophecy is telling us. He says right here's where you're going to go to capture spoil and to seize plunder and to turn your hand against the waste places, again, that are now inhabited since 1948, and against the people who are gathered from the nations. There's that prophecy again who have acquitted cattle and goods, who live at the center of the world. Remember last uh, Tuesday before, I told you, God considers Israel the center of the world. Everything runs off of Israel. Now, 
I'm going to switch right here. I want to read this in the King James Version. The next verse here. All right. Sheba, Sheba and Dedan and merchants of Tarshish. Listen to this now. With all the young lines thereof, we are the young line nation. We come from Great Britain. What's on Great Britain's flag? A line. We are a young nation. The Bible says we're not mentioned. A lot of people says we're not mentioned in the Bible. We are. We're called the young line nation. And we are. And right here it shows us. Now, a good question and food for thought. If we're the young line nation here, why are we asking this question if we're still a superpower? And I'm not trying to scare nobody, but listen to this. I'm going to read it again. Sheba and Dedan and merchants of Tarshish with all the young lines thereof. In other words, any, all, all your young line nations. And we are a young line nation, folks. Where did we come from? Great Britain. All right. He says right here, he says, we ask this question. Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered the company to take the prey? Are, we, are you to carry off the silver and gold to take cattle and goods to take a great spoil? Folks, why? If we're a young lion nation and we're a superpower when this happens, why are we asking these questions? It's food for thought. It's scary that we, according to this, are not leading anything. We are bystanders. We are not getting involved. So it's either one of two choices here, folks. We have either fallen as a great superpower somehow, or we are bystanding and we are not helping Israel. It's one or the other. Verse 14, Therefore prophesy, son of man, and say to God, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel are living securely, you Will you not know it? In other words, God says, I'm getting ready to show you that I am God. Okay? You will come from your place out of the remote parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great assembly and a mighty army. He said, and you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. And it shall, it shall come about in the last days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am sanctified through you, your eyes, O God. Now, three ways here that, that, these, that these nations are going to be defeated. Three ways. God's getting ready to tell us these three methods of defeat that he's going to destroy 94% of this army. There's a sixth part that he's not going to destroy. They're going to be able to go back and warn and tell their land and other lands, hey, we just went up against the God of Israel and we were almost 100% annihilated. God leaves a sixth part of this army just for that reason. And I will show you that shortly. He says, thus says the Lord God, you are the one of whom I spoke in former days through my servants and the prophets of Israel who prophesied in those days for many years and I, I bring you against them. He says right here, here we go. It will come about on that day when God comes against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, that my fury will mount up in my anger. He says in my zeal and in my blazing wrath, I declare that on that day, there will be surely, this is the first method, there'll be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. In other words, he's going to open the land up and he's going to swallow so many of this army. Like I said, there's three ways this, this army's defeated here. Okay? The first one's a great earthquake. Now, how great is this earthquake? Listen to this. The fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things that creep on the earth, and all the men, all the men who are on the face of the earth will shake at my presence. In other words, you, if you're left, you're not a Christian and you've not been taken in the rapture, you will feel that earthquake right here 
in Norton, Virginia. All men across the face of the earth. He said, you will shake at my presence. The mountains also will be thrown down. The steep pathways will collapse and every wall will fall to the ground. Every wall, every mountain will be leveled. That's, what a, that's how great this earthquake's going to be. Now that's the first part of the annihilation of this massive army. The second part of the, mass, of the annihilation of this massive army is right here. He says, I will call for a sword against him on all my mountains, declares the Lord God. He said, every man's sword will be against his brother. In other words, this is called today in military terms, friendly fire. This is the second method of destruction against this army that he destroys 94% of. Verse 22, with pestilence and with blood, I will enter into judgment with him and I will rain on him and all his troops and all the many peoples who are with him, a territorial rain. Listen, with hailstones, fire, and brimstone, he's going to stone them just like they did back in the Old Testament. He says right here, so this is the third method of destroying 94% of this army. He will leave a sixth of this army so they can return back and tell them that they they went against the land of Israel. They run into their God, hit their God, which is Jehovah, and he utterly annihilated them. So he uses an earthquake. The second one, he uses friendly fire. The third, he, he, he stones them. He says right here in verse 23, I will magnify myself, sanctify myself, and make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they will know that I am the Lord. Now, let's go over to verse 30, or chapter 39 here. I want to read you something. Let me, let me get back. I want to use the King James Version right here. Right. He says right here, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and thus say to the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Listen to this now. I will, I, and I will turn thee back, and leave but a sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up on the north parts, and will bring upon you upon the mountains of Israel. He has done told us there will be a sixth part of this army that will be sent back out of 100%. 94% of this army is going to be destroyed. 6% of this army will be allowed to return to their homelands where these 10 kings come from to actually let them know, hey, we went up against the God of Israel and he, he, he annihilated us. So folks, that pretty much breaks down the Gog-Magog wars. Again, we will pick back up, and also something I don't know if I if I mention or not, but the ten kings that we learn here about, we also need to re remember the Stan nations. These are Scythian nations, Afghanistan, uh, all the Stan nations, the ones that ends in Stan. These are all Muslim nations that, that surround Israel. They will also be part of this great battle. Why? Because the Arabs hate the Jewish people. So we will actually, next Tuesday, we'll, we'll get into, we're talking about the, we're going to get into the one world monetary system, the unholy trinity of Satan. We're actually going to learn about uh, what happens with a mark of the beast. Uh, we've also got two more wars to talk about. We've, we've also got the white, great white throne judgment, the, the Christian judgment. The Battle of Armageddon, the Second Advent. We have, we still have a lot to go, folks, in this pre-millennial view. And I hope tonight that you guys have enjoyed the Bible lesson. Please uh, pray for me. Pray that God touches me to get this word out to you all. Also tonight, if if you would invite a friend next Tuesday, someone that would be interested to know what's coming. And I've had Christians ask me before, why, if you're a Christian, why do you? Why does it matter? We're going to be gone, true, but there's going to be people left behind, and these people need to know what's coming, and it's going to be a time like nothing I've ever seen on this earth before, folks. And again, please like and share so 
this video gets out and hopefully it'll touch someone's life tonight if you're not a Christian I want to give you an opportunity I want to open it up to you tonight and give you an opportunity to know the Lord to actually get saved and actually serve the Lord and we we as Christians just we've got to prepare ourselves for what's coming and we've got to understand that there's five main political agendas that I've taught on that this Antichrist is going to run and folks we're getting close to that time you see Bible prophecy being fulfilled every day and again I'll go over these five main political agendas it's a one world order it's a one world religion it's a one world government it's a one world monetary system and a one world military power and this is what this these are the political agendas that since Antichrist is going to run folks you don't want to be here for this I'm telling you the church the ever prophecy has been fulfilled up to the rapture of the church folks and we talked about the third temple. Israel's already talking about rebuilding the third temple. Folks, Bible prophecy is right here. It's today. Today's the day for salvation. And I want to open it up for you today. If you've not been saved, then say this prayer with me. If you've backslid from the Lord, say this prayer. Turn, your, turn back to Jesus. Turn back to God. It's, not, it's never too late until you, till you die with, and that last breath. Then the Bible says you're sealed to the day of judgment. You are facing a judgment, folks, if you're not a Christian that you do not want to face. It's forever. It's, it's eternity, folks, without God. So three things you must do to become saved. Admit your sin and ask God to forgive you. Believe in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross, he rose the third day, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you've got to make that commitment by faith to him. So join in with me tonight and, and say this prayer, and, and the Lord will save you. Father God, Lord, tonight I believe the Bible, I believe Jesus Christ actually was born a virgin birth. Lord, I believe he come into this world, Father. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And tonight, Lord, I forsake my sins, Lord, and I ask him to come into my heart and save my soul, Lord. And Father God, thank you for the knowledge to know, Lord, and now I've accepted you, Lord. Father, I backslid, and Lord, I, I, I ask you, Lord, I want to rededicate my life to you, Father, so I can continually serve you. Father God, tonight, if anyone said these two prayers, Father God, touch them. I pray tonight, Father God, that, Lord, you will intervene in their life, Lord, and Father God, they will grow spiritually as well as physically. This and all things, Father God, I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Tonight, if you've said that prayer, if you rededicated your life, please let me know. Message me. Let me know. If you need prayer, Folks, message me, and I'll be more than happy to put you on my church's prayer list as well as pray for you. Again, tonight, thank you guys for joining in. Please like and share so God's Word gets out. Next Tuesday night, we will try to pick back up and start on the One World Monetary System. Everyone have a blessed Tuesday evening. Good night.